A circular economy is one in which the materials are maintained in a closed loop. When a customer is done with a product, instead of throwing it into the garbage, the product is recovered and its embedded materials become inputs for the next round of new products. Instead of cradle to grave, it's cradle to cradle. Business leaders want to move towards a circular economy model, but survey shows they don't know how to do it. We're lucky, however, because we already have a perfect model of a circular economy operating right now. It produces huge volumes of very sophisticated products, everything from high-tech ceramics to portable supercomputers. It's constantly innovating and improving the performance of those products, and doing so in a way that never jeopardizes the sustainability or livability of the planet. That model is the Earth's biosphere. The tantalizing possibility is that we can decipher the principles that account for the sustainability of the biosphere, translate them into business principles, and embed them into the corporate DNA. By doing so, sustainability ceases to be a management issue. It becomes embedded into the fundamental architecture of business. Embed it and forget it. So what are the principles that account for nature's fundamental sustainability? They can be explained with a handful of guidelines called the biosphere rules. Rule number one, materials parsimony. The elements in the periodic table from actinium to zirconium are the building blocks for everything we see. Astonishingly, however, out of the more than 100 elements, nature chose to use just four, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, to produce all living things. Add a little sulfur and phosphorus, and you can account for 99% of the weight of every living thing on the planet. Why would nature limit itself to just four elements? because it makes recycling easy. When all life is made from the same building blocks, nature can break down a rabbit and reuse those materials to build a cactus, owl, or even another rabbit. And simplicity has not limited nature's creativity. There are millions of species on our biodiverse planet, nor has simplicity inhibited the creation of products far more advanced than those of human industrial science. Abalone mother of pearl is twice as tough as science's best ceramics, while spider silk is stronger than steel, yet light enough to float on the wind. Rule number two, value cycling. Standardization ensures that raw materials are always available and don't have to be shipped or sorted. When an organism dies, the biosphere recovers its materials and reinserts them into the production process, continually cycling them in an evolutionary process of ever greater ecosystem integration and value. From the first cyanobacteria to human beings, nature has used the same materials in a virtuous cycle. Value cycling is counterintuitive because it relies on planned obsolescence, the bane of environmentalists. But biological obsolescence, otherwise known as death, plays a vital role in the biosphere. The unceremonious process of ushering out the old and ushering in the new allows change. Without it, the biosphere could not evolve. Rule number three, power autonomy. Constantly value cycling your parsimonious materials palette ensures that you're not building up piles of waste or continually raising forests and mountaintops for new material inputs. But that doesn't solve all of manufacturing's sustainability challenges. Value cycling is great, but every transformation of materials, from fox to fish, requires energy. Nature conveniently solves this problem by using a giant nuclear reactor safely located 93 million miles away, the sun. The final biosphere rule requires that we move all of our economic activity to renewable resources like solar energy. When I first published the Biosphere Rules in 2008, they were well received, but most executives said their companies were not ready to implement such a sweeping vision, no matter how compelling. But a decade later, the emergence of 3D printing is changing the game. 3D printing is uniquely suited to implementing the Biosphere Rules because it emulates the way nature builds organisms. It's called additive manufacturing because, like nature, it builds a product by adding layer upon layer building block upon building block. 3D printing's additive manufacturing approach means a single plastic polymer can be used to create a nearly infinite number of forms, fulfilling the principle of materials parsimony. In terms of power autonomy, 3D printing also runs primarily on electricity and can thus be powered by solar energy, something that is already happening around the world. 
and even value cycling has been demonstrated with 3D printing. Integrated recycling processes, one of which is called a RecycleBot, can take an old object, grind it down, and reuse it as raw materials for the next printing run. An example of what a 3D printed circular economy built on the biosphere rules might look like could be the San Diego based shoemaker Feats. The company 3D prints custom fit shoes with over 90% of the shoe produced from a single parsimonious recyclable material. Customers can value cycle their old shoes by sending them back to the company when they're done. Feats then turns them back into shiny new trainers, something that can be done up to 20 times with current technology. Because of its huge potential, 3D printing is predicted to usher in what some are calling the third industrial revolution. But unlike past revolutions, we can build this one the way nature does, from the ground up and with sustainability in mind. By using nature as a model, additive manufacturing technologies can become the infrastructure for a sustainable circular economy. To find out more about the biosphere rules and 3D printing, Check out California Management Review's special issue on the circular economy, volume 60, issue 3.